Hi everyone, just Mr. Tukin. want to give you a quick review on analyzing linear functions, hopefully prepare you from assignment questions and stuff. There's three main topics you have to understand. Uh, first off, rate of change is the same thing as slope, is the same thing as rise over run. So when you're asked to get any of these three things, they're asking you for the exact same thing. Now, depending on what you need to get it, what you need to do um, to get it, you're going to end up with um, some different things. You're, you're going to end up with different ways of getting the answer, but it's all looking for the same thing. And so I always like to remind students what we do often is we think of slope, which is the second y minus the first y, and that's over, or it's a ratio, it's a fraction of the second x minus the first x. But also realize things like, um, you know, some other scenarios where we hear rates, think about rates in real life. Those are rates of change. So when you're hearing slope, you're hearing rate of change. When you're hearing rise over run, and we'll show that a little bit, we're still talking about slope. Um, as we continue to move on, we're going to focus on also initial values and again, y intercept. What I mean by again is we're talking about the same thing. When we get an initial value of a scenario, um, of a situation, uh, we're also, when we look at the graph, that's its y-intercept, it's its starting point. Although our linear functions go on forever. So remember when we're looking at a graph, we might be talking about, you know, an x, uh, y-axis, there's our x-axis, and we've got some type of linear function. Remember linear functions make straight lines, and where, although the graph of the linear function goes on forever, the starting point, the initial value in a real world scenario is going to be your y intercept. So the function will graph maybe be out beyond reasonable um, or what the scenario says. However, when we're looking for the actual initial value on the graph, we're talking about the y intercept. And we'll also talk about how, hey, that's essentially a y intercept is always the value of y when x is zero. Okay, so we're looking for that point. And we'll have charts and stuff where you can easily see, okay, my x is zero, what's my y? So you can state the, the y-intercept that way. And then finally, we want to be able to read a graph, match up with word problems, tables of value, stuff like that. So when we give you a scenario, um, if we can identify the slope, if we can identify the rate of change, if we can identify what the initial value is, or our starting point, or essentially our y-intercept, we can then use that scenario and be able to choose between you know four graphs and determine which one is the actual answer, which graph represents the linear function. All right, so as we go from there, we're just looking at an example of uh, slope. And again, we're looking at rise over run. So if you look from this point right here to this point right here, there's a number of different ways we could do it. What you're seeing on this is how they do the rise over the run. That's essentially slope. We went up. That's a positive movement from this point to this point. We go up 12 and we went to the right six. That's also a positive movement. So that's why it's a positive six. And 12 over six, we can then simplify that, that slope um, to become two. So essentially just remember that slope is also considered two over one. You know, we're going right to and we're going, uh, excuse me, we're going up two for every one that we go right. Um, and then rate of change. Remember, these are actually slopes as well. They're actually rate of change. If we think about 40 miles per hour, there's two units in there. It's 40 miles for every one hour. All right. And you can do that for each one of those. If you look at each one, they're literally saying $50 over one appointment, 55 words per minute. Now we could express rates of change. The denominator doesn't have to be always one. I mean, I guess I could rewrite this second one and we could turn around and say, no, that's, that's 55 words every um, 60 seconds. All right. So I'm just converting a unit, but we're looking at another rate of change. It doesn't necessarily have to be one in the bottom or the denominator, but sometimes it is. So keep that in mind. Again, rate of change, same as slope. And these are just different ways we see them. There's going to be scenarios where they're not going to have a graph. They're not going to say it's a rate of change. They're not going to say it's a slope, but they are going to give you a rate. And you just have to be able to identify that. Um, when we're looking at this, what I want to do is give you an opportunity. Um, I'm going to do this one, and then I'll have you do this one. Um, and I'll pause the video and just show you what to do. So when we're asked and we're given a graph to determine the rate of change, what we want to do is find some points where the, gra the graph of the line clearly crosses that um, intercept point. So I see like one right here. And that ordered pair, that ordered pair that represents that point is 6, um, 300. I'm actually going to switch to typing here. 
All right, so the cool thing about linear functions is you may have grabbed two different uh, points here or saw two different points, but these are the two that I looked at and said, oh, those look pretty good. And so again, all you would do is subtract your y's or your y2 minus your y1. And you're going to put that over your x2 or second x uh, minus your first x. And if we do that, we're going to end up with 200 over 5. And uh, if we do 200 divided by 5, you're going to end up with 40. Now, that also could be 40 over 1. So in this case, maybe it's $40 over one month. I, I don't know because they don't tell us the exact units. They just tell us it's a cost. So um, that's our rate of change. That's our slope. I'm going to pause the video. Why don't you try this one? Grab a couple points. Try to create the, the or find the rate of change slash slope. Now, these are the two points I'm going to use. You can use others. And again, you can pause this video if I didn't mention it before and try it out on your own. So I have 24,000 minus 16,000. Again, that's my y2 minus my y1. And 30 minus 15 for the x, the second x minus the first x. Now that gives me 8,000 over 15, and they might do a couple different things. They may just turn around and actually divide those two numbers, 8,000 divided by 15. And so when we do that, I went ahead and grabbed this calculator. It's 533.33. Um, but I did want to point out that they might actually just turn around and reduce the fraction. Maybe they reduce it to where it's, um, you know, divi divisible by five. So if we have that, if they have that, you're going to end up with literally like 1600 um, over three. Okay, so we divide both numbers by nine. So you might have the right of rate of change, but look for reducing the fraction. You never know if that's the case. Another thing with rate of change you're going to see is just in these points, in these tables. So we've got two tables of values, and these are even easier than a graph for getting rate of change. You just have to realize that this, this function notation, f of x, is just y. So we've got several ordered pairs. You've got 0, 3, you've got 1, 4, you've got 2, 5, you've got 3, 6, you've got 4, 7. And the cool thing is, in a linear function, your slope, your rate of change never changes. It doesn't matter which two points you get. I'm actually going to go ahead and use these ordered pairs. I'm going to do it twice. I'm going to pause the video. You try it as well. Calculate the rate of change, and let's see what you get. I'm going to prove that it doesn't matter which point we use by doing it twice. So I did this first one, and I chose 0, 3, and 2, 5, and I subtracted the y's over the subtraction of the x's. That gave me 2 over 2, and that reduces to just 1 or 1 over 1, either way. And let's see this one. So same thing here. Of course, I mistyped, but if you do 6 minus 4, you know, basically subtracting the y's, and um, you end up with uh, 2 again and 3 minus 1, which is 2. And again, it doesn't matter. I could have done 7, 4, and, and, or 4, 7, and 0, 3, and we still would have worked it out. Let's do this other one, and you can give it a shot as well. Probably should have chose a better one. I can already see the answer here. But we're going to end up with 1 minus 0 over 1 minus 0. And, uh, of course, I drew an exclamation point. But 1 minus 0 over 1 minus 0 is literally going to give us 1 over 1, and that still equals 1. So that's just by chance. We don't always end up with, obviously, you know, slopes of 1. But that's how you can use a table of values to get our rate of change as well. Remember, when we first started, I said your initial value is your y-intercept. So when we're looking at it, where is the y-intercept on this graph? And it would be right there. And in this case, we'd probably have to estimate. But I also want to point out, what is the point? Well, remember, a y-intercept is always the value of y when your x is 0. So I'm going to estimate. I'm going to say, given that this is counting by 50, I know it's slightly above 50, I'm going to say that's 70. So I'm going to say the initial value is 70 in this case. Or um, it looks like we started out with a cost of $70, we'll say. And where did I get that information? Well, it's telling me the cost over the number of months. So at zero months, when we first started tracking and checking and tracking, we, it cost us seven, $70. Maybe that means we just started up and we started up with T-Mobile and there was initial startup cost of 70 bucks. I had to pay $70 to start that up. Or maybe I was given a $70 credit. I don't know exactly, but that's kind of the scenario aspect. So when we talk about what does it mean, it's talking about, okay, when we had, when we just started, we were at positive $70. There was a cost of $70 to start. And then again, we can get the rate of change like we did before, getting, you know, each of the, the ordered pairs and, and doing that. But when it asks us for the y-intercept, that is also our initial value. Very, very important to make that connection. Now, in a function, in, in these charts, our initial value is, again, the value of x 
what is y? Remember, this is f of x. These charts tell us. So we can see it right away. We don't have to do any work. Our initial value is 3. Or maybe they say y-intercept, and it's 0, 3. And here it's 0, 0. We're just grabbing the ordered pairs. We're realizing that a y-intercept is the value of y when x is 0. In the scenarios, we're going to be given charts, and that's what we're going to do. You're going to go ahead and look for that y-intercept. That's your initial value. Look at the table of values. When x is 0, what is our y? That's what we're looking for. And you know how to do the rate of change. You just look and kind of subtract those values like we did before. I did want to throw this last kind of problem on, maybe one more after this, where if they don't show you, it's up to you to kind of work. Well, look, every two, every two, what's happening with the y? So in order to get a rate of change, you would go ahead and say, what's happening? Well, I've got 20 minus 10, that's our y value, over 4 minus 2. So that's going to be 10 over 2, or a rate of change of 5 over 1 or 5. $5 per pizza, it looks like here. Where did I get that? Well, they're talking about dollars, and they're talking about numbers of pizza. But what about the initial value? Well, that's where you'd have to work backwards. So if every 2, so the next 2 would be 0, right? If every 2 we are going up by 10, well, then we're decreasing by 10 the other way. So you would work backwards to get that answer. And luckily, it's 0, 0. Because if we go back 2 to get to 0, then we have to subtract 10 to work backwards. Because when we're going forward every 2, we're adding 10. So you have to look for that combination as well. And then finally, you're going to end up with these type of statements. Um, Miguel has a medical degree with student loans of 250000 He then was hired as a doctor at a local hospital earning 100000 per year. We want to be able to identify the initial value and the rate of change. And I'm saying rate because, again, you're going to see things like big time, per, per year. That's screaming at you to write this down to say, okay, I've got $100,000 and it's every year. It's one year. So keep that in mind. And then functions it represents. Well, initial value. If we're talking about Miguel's finances, his initial value is negative 2,500. 1,000, because it was a loan. It was money he didn't have originally. So the starting point's at zero, negative 250,000. When we started looking at the end of his degree, the beginning of his, his job, he was at time zero, you know, no time, no time had passed, and $250,000 debt. So that's his initial value, and that's his rate of change. Hope that helps going into the assignment.